Carter distinguishes the two voices in March by having one hand play with the butt end of the stick, while the other hand plays with the normal end. He also applies dynamics either to both hands or just to one voice, like here. This is the famous section where you have to change both hands quickly between butts and heads. You only have one or one and a half beats to make the change and begin playing again. If you watch my video of this piece, which you can find for free on Vimeo, you will see that I like to flip the mallets. They are only actually in the air for just a split second and you don't have to change your playing position. If your hands follow the normal arc of the stick motion, there is little chance of dropping the stick, although you should probably have another pair handy just in case. I have seen students exchange mallets between hands in order to change ends, but personally I am not fond of that method. The extra motion required looks frantic and takes away from the flow of the section. One issue I often see with this five against two section is that students alter the evenness of the five in order to place the second note of the two precisely halfway between the third and fourth notes of the five. One way to avoid this trap is to feel the evenness of the left hand fives. That is, try just playing the quintuplets with finger strokes on the left hand alone and remember what that feels like. Then try adding the right hand without changing the left hand feeling. Here is an editorial change I recommend. I believe it is a mistake in the manuscript as well as in the published part. In the reprise of the March theme on the third page, there is a B notated in the left hand, which I believe should actually be in the right hand with the head of the mallet. I think this is because between the E and B in the right hand, there is a repeating pattern of five. E, B, E, E, B, E, B, E, E, B. And to fit that pattern, this B would have to be in the right hand. Also, that is the way it occurs in an analogous section in the beginning of the piece. Timpanists have struggled to find a good way to mute the drums in this closing section of the piece. Many players would drag mutes off the edge of carefully placed horizontal music stands. I developed these mutes, which magnetically attach to the rim of the drum and are mallet actuated, so you just have to flip them down with your mallet. They are made in a set of four sizes where each mute's length is proportional to one of the drums in a standard set of timpani. You can see them in action on the Good Muse website, linked from this YouTube page, and also in my original video recording of the piece on Vimeo. They are available at Steve Weiss Music.